Hey, what's up guys? Today, we're going to talk about a game that can make you feel frustrated and even pained, but is also super addictive and satisfying. In fact, the more pain you feel, the more satisfaction you get. It's almost like a toxic addiction. I'm talking about the game that started it all for the notorious souls-like genre, Demon's Souls. Back in 2009, a super difficult and player-unfriendly game was released, with no tutorial, no clear story, and a special storytelling style that was unlike anything else. Even Yoshida, the president of Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios at the time, didn't immediately appreciate the game's potential. But as players started flocking to it, it became clear that something special was happening. Over a decade later, it's no exaggeration to say that Demon's Souls revolutionized the gaming industry. But what makes this game so addictive? It's all about the satisfaction of conquering difficulty and achieving victory over seemingly impossible odds. Now, with the Demon's Souls remake, we have a chance to relive that thrill in stunning detail. Not only is this game the origin of the Souls-like genre, but it's also the first game in the lineup for the PS5 release. With breathtaking visuals, haptic feedback, and immersive background music, it's a truly next-generation experience that will keep you on the edge of your seat. If you're a fan of the Dark Souls series, Bloodborne, Sekiro, or Elden Ring, you owe it to yourself to give Demon's Souls Remake a try. This is the game that started it all, and it's never been better than it is now. So join me on this journey as we explore the soul of Demon's Souls Remake and discover the origins of a genre. Let's dive in. Gamers of Cheetah Demon's Souls Remake is a challenging action role-playing game. Developed by Bluepoint Games in Japan Studio, that was released exclusively for the PlayStation 5 platform in 2020. Set in the cursed land of Bolteria, players take on the role of a hero tasked with defeating the powerful demon, the Old One, and its minions to restore peace to the kingdom. The game's difficulty has been a major selling point since its original release, and the remake continues that tradition. Players must carefully manage their health, stamina, and resources to survive the many challenges they will face. But the game also offers a great sense of satisfaction when players overcome its challenges and triumph over its enemy. The remake features upgraded graphics and improved performance, taking advantage of the PS5's advanced hardware. It also includes new features such as haptic feedback and 3D audio, which enhance the immersion and intensity of the gameplay. I would like to emphasize how amazing the haptic feedback is in Demon's Souls Remake. I've played dozens of games on the PlayStation 5, but this one impressed me a lot. The haptic feedback allows you to feel different sensations through the controller, adding a whole new level of immersion to your gaming experience. For example, when you swing your weapon, you'll feel the impact of the weapon in your hands, which adds to the feeling of weight and force behind your attacks. You can even tell the difference between materials like wood, steel, or flesh when you chop your enemy with your sword. It's truly an amazing experience. The haptic feedback also adds a layer of feedback to the combat system. When you take damage, the controller vibrates in a way that lets you feel the impact of the attack. This can help you get a sense of how much damage you're taking and adjust your strategy accordingly. Overall, the haptic feedback in Demon's Souls Remake is a great addition to the game, making it more immersive and enjoyable to play. It's definitely worth experiencing for yourself if you have a PlayStation 5. It's undoubtedly the next-generation gaming experience. Demon's Souls had a significant impact on the gaming industry, spawning an entire genre of games known as Souls-like games. These games share many common gameplay mechanics that were introduced in Demon's Souls. One of the most notable gameplay mechanics introduced in Demon's Souls is the checkpoint system, which is represented by the game's signature bonfires. These bonfires serve as safe havens for players, where they can heal their character and also serve as checkpoints where the player will respawn if they die. However, resting at a bonfire will also cause all enemies in the area to respawn, adding to the challenge and replayability of the game. One major complaint I have about Demon's Souls Remake is the distance between checkpoints, or lack thereof. It's frustrating that there are no checkpoints between two bosses, which means that you have to run an incredibly long distance to reach the boss from the last checkpoint. Sometimes, this can be a super difficult journey with tough minions along the way that are almost impossible to skip. For instance, the path to the 3-3 Old Monk is particularly challenging, with minions that are hard to defeat and difficult to avoid.
This octopus dude is so freaking annoying. He can dish out insane magical damage and taking him down takes a ton of time. And to make matters worse, there are two of those jerks on the path to the boss. It's seriously maddening. Another example is the path to 2-2 flame marker, where you are forced to take damage when you fall down. At times, I found myself thinking that I must have missed a shortcut or easier way to reach the boss, but unfortunately, there aren't many shortcuts in the game. Most of the paths leading to bosses are just ridiculous, making it feel like a mission impossible. Another common gameplay mechanic in Soul-like games is the penalty for death. In Demon's Souls, dying causes the player to lose all their accumulated souls, which serve as both experience points and currency for purchasing items and upgrading equipment. The player must return to the location of their death to retrieve their lost souls, or risk losing them permanently. This creates a sense of risk and reward, as players must weigh the potential rewards of exploring new areas against the risk of losing their progress. Some players, like myself, may find the stress of retrieving their lost souls overwhelming and choose to take a different approach, such as exploring new areas or trying different strategies, instead of insisting on retrieving them. Additionally, Soul-like games are known for their challenging combat mechanics, which requires players to learn enemy attack patterns, dodge and parry attacks, and strategically manage their resources. In Soul-like games, the storytelling is often intentionally ambiguous, with few clear clues or hints. Players must often rely on their own observations and exploration to piece together the story and understand the game world. Item descriptions can be a critical source of information, revealing important details about the game's lore and history. For example, the description of Soulbrant offers insight into the game's worldview and hidden story. The description of Soulbrant is a blade that can cut the very soul, held for generations by the Boltarian royal family, paired with its counterpart, Demonbrant, to form Northern Regalia. Since his coronation, the sword has never left King Alan's side. The closer the soul of the wielder is to a demon, the more powerful this blade becomes. No wonder it was chosen by old King Alan. The description of Soulbrand suggests that King Allen is ambitious and willing to make sacrifices for power. It also implies that the blade's power is tied to the wielder's soul, and the closer it is to that of a demon, the stronger the weapon becomes. This reflects the game's central theme of the power of the soul and the blurred lines between good and evil. The player must navigate a world where corruption and power are intertwined, and using powerful weapons like Soulbrand comes at a great cost. However, different players may interpret the story and worldview differently making the Soul-like games engaging as everyone has their own unique understanding. Overall, Demon's Souls introduced many of the defining elements of the Soul-like genre, such as ambiguous storytelling, challenging gameplay, and unforgiving mechanics such as sparse checkpoints and harsh penalties for death, and its impact can be seen in the countless games that have followed in its footsteps. Alright, let's talk about the differences between Demon's Souls and other Souls-like games, starting with the combat mechanics. In Demon's Souls, the combat mechanics focuses more on cautious, strategic play. Players are encouraged to observe enemy movements and attack patterns, and then find openings to strike. The game rewards players who take a more defensive approach, as blocking and dodging attacks are often more effective than trying to overpower enemies with brute force. Additionally, the game features a stamina system, where every action depletes the player's stamina, making it necessary to carefully manage actions during combat. On the other hand, let's consider another well-known Soul-like game, Bloodborne, which promotes a more aggressive playstyle. Its combat mechanics are designed to be fast-paced, and players are encouraged to constantly move and attack aggressively to build up their beasthood meter. Bloodborne also features a unique parrying system that enables players to stagger and counter-attack enemies using their firearm, 
but it requires precise timing to execute. In summary, while Demon's Souls emphasizes cautious and strategic play, Bloodborne's combat mechanics are faster paced and encourage an aggressive approach. There is another unique game mechanic in Demon's Souls, the World Tendency System. The World Tendency System affects the difficulty and appearance of enemies in certain events in the game. When the world tendency is white, enemies will have less health and deal less damage, making the game easier. Certain areas and events will also become accessible in white tendency. On the other hand, when the world tendency is black, enemies will have more health and deal more damage, making the game harder. Some enemies will also appear only in black tendency, and certain events will change or become unavailable. Players can manipulate the world tendency by performing certain actions in the game, such as defeating bosses or invading other players' games. The world tendency can also be affected by dying while in human form, which will shift the tendency towards black. To be honest, I completely ignored this game mechanic when I first completed the game. It wasn't until I searched for information about the game that I discovered it. The mechanic is incredibly unclear. I noticed there was a tendency tab in the main menu, but there was no explanation or tutorial about it only some eye-shaped symbols shown on each world. So I decided to ignore it and wait for an explanation or tutorial, but I completely forgot about it until the end of the game. I didn't even complete any tendency events during my first playthrough. This is typical of Souls-like games. There are important game mechanics with no tutorials. It can be fun or engaging, but also frustrating at times. All right, let me share my personal thoughts and ratings on different aspects of this game, including story, gameplay, audio, visuals, and replayability. First up, the story. Although it's super unclear, the storytelling is actually quite amazing. It's more like not telling a story and requires players to explore and piece things together themselves. This adds an extra layer of depth to the exploration and makes you start guessing and thinking about the characters' backgrounds or the history of the world. The worldview is quite epic and compelling, and learning the story from other players is really fun and interesting. There are tons of hardcore gamers sharing their analysis and thoughts online. Personally, I was highly attracted to the special storytelling, so I would give the story a high score of 9.1 out of 10. The dark and suppressed story, as well as the worldview, really fascinated me. The gameplay in the game is challenging and rewarding, with a focus on cautious and strategic play. The combat mechanics are well designed and the game offers a wide range of weapons and equipment for players to choose from. The game's RPG elements are also well implemented, with a leveling system that rewards players for exploring and defeating enemies. The online multiplayer adds an extra layer of depth to the gameplay, allowing players to team up and take on challenges together. Overall, the gameplay is excellent, and I would give it a rating of 8.7 out of 10. The game's difficulty and depth are its strengths. However, there are some game mechanics that are simply not enjoyable, such as the insane distance between checkpoints. It can be frustrating and annoying to have to run long distances to reach bosses, without any sense of accomplishment or satisfaction. If not for this issue, I would rate the gameplay even higher, above 9 out of 10. When it comes to audio, the orchestral score is absolutely stunning and adds to the epic feel of the game. The music sets the tone for each area of the game. With haunting melodies in darker areas and more uplifting music in areas where the player is making progress. The sound design is also very impressive, with sound effects that make it feel like danger could be lurking around every corner. You can hear the sound of enemies approaching from different directions, adding to the tension of the game. One particularly impressive aspect of the audio design is the use of the controller's sound. The controller produces a variety of sounds that add to the immersion of the game. For example, when a player blocks an attack with their shield, the controller produces a satisfying clanging sound. When a player runs through water, the controller produces a splashing sound that makes it feel like you are really wading through a stream. The attention to detail in the audio design is truly remarkable. Overall, I would rate the audio and music in this game very highly, with a score of 9.3 out of 10. The orchestral score is exceptional, and the sound design is immersive and adds to the overall experience of the game. This game provides a next-generation gaming experience, showcasing the power of the PS5. The visuals in this game are truly stunning, and provide a next-generation gaming experience that is worth noting. The graphics are incredibly detailed, and the game world is beautifully crafted with intricate details and stunning vistas that make exploring a true joy. The lighting effects are also impressive, and add an extra layer of depth to the game's immersive atmosphere. Additionally, the character and enemy designs are both unique and impressive, adding to the overall visual appeal of the game. Overall, I would rate the visuals a 9.5 out of 10. It's evident that it was designed specifically for the PS5, rather than being a cross-generation game. The graphics and performance are stunning, 
with impressive lighting, particle effects, and detailed character models. Playing this game on the PS5 truly feels like a step up from previous console generation. The replayability of this game is definitely worth noting. The new Game Plus mode is highly recommended since some of the boss fights in the first playthrough may not be as challenging. The added difficulty in New Game Plus provides a thrilling and adrenaline-filled experience when battling bosses. Additionally, players can experiment with different builds and weapons, which can drastically alter the gameplay experience. For example, playing as a mage and utilizing magic spells can provide a completely different playstyle compared to that of a warrior. I highly recommend playing New Game Plus as your second playthrough. Overall, I would rate the replayability of this game a 9.1 out of 10. This game features a unique storytelling style that encourages exploration and leaves the story up to interpretation, earning a score of 9.1 out of 10 for its story. The gameplay is challenging and rewarding with well-designed combat mechanics, a solid RPG system, and the addition of online multiplayer, earning a score of 8.7 out of 10. The audio provides an epic background score, immersive sound effects, and an amazing audio experience through the controller, earning a score of 9.3 out of 10. The stunning visuals showcase the power of the PS5, earning a score of 9.5 out of 10. The replayability is high with the addition of New Game Plus, and the ability to try different playstyles, earning a score of 9.1 out of 10. Overall, this game offers a next-generation gaming experience that is worth playing. Before we wrap up this video, I want to share some fun facts with you all. One interesting thing is the Moonlight Greatsword a weapon with a striking and visually appealing appearance that has appeared in every From Software game except Sekiro. The sword made its debut in King's Field, an action RPG game developed by From Software in 1994, where it was known as the Moonlight Sword and was one of the most powerful weapons in the game. In the Dark Souls series, the Moonlight Greatsword is famous for its unique moveset and high damage output. Meanwhile, in Bloodborne, there is a similar weapon called the Holy Moonlight Sword, which is a large sword that can be transformed into a glowing blade that deals both physical and arcane damage. The Moonlight Sword in Bloodborne is the first time I saw the Moonlight Sword, and I was fascinated by the lore behind it. It has a sad, beautiful, and impressive story that adds to its mystique. Alright, I am wondering who is your favorite boss and why? Hey, Old King Allant. The King of All Demons is a truly intimidating foe. He resides in a grand throne room, just waiting for some unsuspecting adventurer to challenge him. To make matters worse, he possesses the ability to drain your levels with his massive demon hands. That's not cool, bro. B. Penetrator. Don't let the name fool you, this guy is actually a badass knight. He's got a sweet looking sword, and he's not afraid to use them. Plus, he's got a whole crew of other knights backing him up, so you better bring your a game. C. Old Hero. This guy is blind, but that doesn't stop him from kicking your butt. He's got a huge sword and he swings it around like he's chopping wood. Plus, he's got some scary magic attacks that can really mess you up. D. Maiden Estria. This boss is a tragic figure, and she's got a strong demon that protects her. She's not really that tough to beat, but you might feel bad about it afterwards because she's just so darn sad. D. Others. Please leave your comments down below and share your thoughts with me. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button. Your support really motivates me to produce more interesting content for all you gamers out there.